Hey there, Dryer here, and welcome to Trains and Worlds 2 West Cornwall Local. Yes, yeah, so we've got a new route today, a new route that's uh, it's released as... It released a couple of weeks ago, then it got pulled off, and it got re-released again today, because of a few issues that I found on the route, so... Today we're taking part in the new route's new service between Penzance and St. Austell St. Ives, so there's a bit of a branch line as well that we get to explore today, out of St. Earth, and hopefully it should be a pretty good... Um, so scenarios as well today as well. So we'll jump in the sim, we'll get all the instructions over the way to tutorials and all that. And hopefully I will try and do a couple of runs. So let's say we'll do a couple we'll do tutorials, do a couple of runs back and forth. And at the end, if all goes to plan, I've also got a modern day scenario to redo as well. So I've recreated one of my well actually it was a route I took a couple of weeks ago to get down to Penzance from London. And had my connection at Plymouth to get myself to Penzance, and so we had a castle set down, and I've kind of used the last part of that service down to Penzance for a modern day recreation as well. So jumping in the route, we'll go through the introductions, and let's see what Cornish commuter, West Cornwall local, has to offer. But I must say, I'm, I am excited for this one, it's been kind of in and out the last couple of weeks, but finally we now have our hands on the, uh, the new route. Welcome to the Cornish mainline. Welcome to Train Sim World 2, an immersive and highly detailed rail simulation featuring authentic routes and trains from around the world. Must admit, not sure whose voice this one is for the uh, train sim side of things. Not a voice I uh, personally recognise. You've just been awarded some action points. These are displayed in the top right hand corner of the screen and count towards your overall experience. Uh, can I say it ground rule? It is necessary to be fully observant of the surrounding world. Practice by looking up, down, left and right. Up, down, left and right. Go put down ground rule. If there's any mention of flight in the stream, I'm just going to time you out full stop. I'm bored of all this nonsense about cross stream and all that. If you mention it, you're getting muted. Right, look up. Look down, look left, and look right. Get the uh. Thing. There we go. Uh, we don't vote that. No, access is fine. I'm happy the way it is. Besides operating trains, there are lots of requirements to navigate on foot. Try moving around now. Now, I actually I was down in Penzance a couple of weeks ago, so when I came down, I say, so I went down to Penzance via Plymouth. And they changed there, so switch over from an IET 800 set to a Class 43 castle. Um, yeah, so, the station, a bit of line that I am very familiar with. The return journey, by the way, taking a sleep service back, so I went uh, to bed in Cornwall, woke up in London Paddington. Uh, in terms of Penzance, it looks virtually the same, apart from a few small changes, where the ticket office and buffing board. The buffing bar is now a first class lounge and a sleeper lounge. Take off this seven uh, measures one big building over here. And also, if we go outside the station, sorry, I'm using a rail driver, so my control my keyboard's a bit funky when I use the uh, rail driver. I need to find out a better way of doing this stuff. Right, uh, just outside as well, the I can't go there, but essentially there's a few lines just outside the station. Modern day it's been pulled out, but in train sim mode, uh, it's still in place. Our stream select this on the uh, collectibles that this route has to offer. This is one of many interactors to be discovered, but not all of them will be as easy to find as this one. Well, I'll never forget a better way to set up my rail driver. Um, right, so yeah, there's our routes map. So starting at Penzance, the first session is St. Earth, where you get the St. Ives branch via Leyland, Carbis Bay and St. Ives. And from St. Uh, Earth, you then go via Hale, Camborne, Red Roof, Turo and St. Austell. Stations in red, so Penzance and Earth, Truro and St. Austell and St. Ives have been the major stations on this route, so the ones in blue, but Lent sidings, sorry, sortings, not sidings, sortings. Um, yeah, so sortings, Leyland, Carbis Bay, Camborne Hale, Red Roof will be the uh, minor station this line. We'll go into that in more detail as we do our service. Um, this is the train, so this is the class 150 Sprint set, built in 1980, late 1970s. Uh, it comes in regional railways colour, so this is pre uh, nationalisation so these are all British rail trains. On the right, you can see what I've done in livery yet, so which is just creating modern day GWR livery set as well. So we'll be doing that more later. As I said, I have recreated a modern day GWR scenario in this route. For now, we are sticking to the, uh, the 1980s. A lot of time will be spent operating trains, so when ready, 
sit in the driver's seat. Take a seat. You can pause the experience at any point and review previous and current objectives. Check it out now, then return to the game when ready. Yeah, so standard main menu, so you got your class 150, that's my train set, 233, carriage 57, 233, two car set, 50, uh, 75 tons, 42 yards in length. Gradient map at Penzance, a bit of a climb out, all standard stuff. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate forward, reverse, and neutral directions. This is the power display. A number will indicate what position the power control is in. These are brake indicators. They show the state of the various brake systems, allowing independent management of them. In the top right are the signal and speed limit displays. These feature are an indication of what is approaching and a countdown distance to when they will come into effect. All stuff we know, all stuff we know. Right, let's get the train ready. So, set the master key into the unlocked position. This train so is ready to, go. to notch one. Push the indicated handle. Woo, okay. Brakes already released, have they? Uh, brake on record two, so separate brakes and throttle. This part of the Cornish main line runs for roughly 44 miles and runs commuter services between Penzance and St. Austell. Okay, it also forward. covers commuter services along the St. Ives branch line. This particular train is the BR Class 150-2 diesel multiple unit in regional railways livery and consists of two cars. Ah, hang Train on. Sim World 2 allows you to ride and drive from a selection of camera views. Let's take a look now while exploring this train. Um, hang on. My rail driver at zero point doesn't actually raise the brakes. You know what? I'm gonna move. Yeah, that's just the uh, brakes screeching next up the brakes active. Um, whoops, I've opened the door by accident. I'm going to not use the rail driver today because, well, the brakes don't actually release on that, so I have to report it as a bug. Uh, I have to close the doors. And I've buggered it! Great. <laughs> Well done, Droya. You have absolutely ruined it. Uh, use the arrow keys to move around. Well, obviously we're going uh, to the first person. You've only explored a small area here, so let's take a look at what else there is to enjoy. Small area, about 20 yards we've explored, if that's... Welcome to the West Cornwall local. Take control of moving commuters and tourists across gorgeous Cornish scenery. Bus lapping waves on beautiful coastal beaches, through scenic countryside to bustling towns, exploring the St Ives branch line and local industry. Make sure to refuel and use the carriage washers. Along the way, don't forget to place route maps, place luggage on the carts, enjoy an ice cream, and put up posters. This is the West Cornwall local. Right, well let's hope these tutorials get a more luck with. Uh, there you go, we went to a total of 41.78 yards. What an uh, introduction to this line. <laughs> class 150 introduction. Surely this can't be as bad. Uh, yes, yeah, so class 150 Sprinter, built in the 1970s, built as a... Well, it's a second generation DMU, so built to replace the old rail car, so the 101s up to 120 series of trains. And, Welcome uh, to this introduction for the class 150 stroke 2 multiple unit okay. in British Rail regional railways livery. During this brief introduction, we will go through the basic start and stop procedures by taking this train into one of the sidings. Cool, thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so I was saying, um, built 1970s as a way to kind of move away from the old rail cars and 
sorry, yeah, rail cars. It's a rail bus and one of two designs that were to get started. introduced. So the 150 was the more successful winner of the lot compared to the 151, which only two built. And in my opinion, the uh, nice looking two locos. But hey ho, 150 was selected and all future sprint sets were based on this design. Yeah, it's not a slash one, I'm afraid, Owen. It is only a slash, uh, slash two. Right, let's jump in the train and let's set it up. So as we we'll board it from the side here, close the door, open up the cab door, close that, jump in the seats and sit. First you need to take control of this cab. Switch the master key to unlock. Switch Unlocked. the headlights to day. Headlights, headlights on. are important in letting others around headlights you know it. Day. Move the reverse uh, to the forward forwards. Position. Move the throttle Throttle's to notch one. one. Move the train brake into Brakes the release. So essentially, to stop the train from rolling back, you apply a tiny bit of power. Throttle notch one. Now the train to uh, get moving relatively swiftly. Speed up to 50 miles per hour. A lot of channel mate, always something to learn. Cheers, Pilot Sim, glad you're enjoying it. Welcome, Kai, welcome, Owen. Yeah, cute trains. <laughs> um, narrative voice, eh, it's slow, it's local, I guess. Uh, some locations win. Uh, each train break when coming to stop at Ponson Dane, Flushing. You get quite a few fun place names in this uh, particle more as well, I must admit. So as you depart from Penzance, it switches down to a single line of track. Single line of track as we reach towards the first station, which is, if I bring up the map. Uh, so, first station is in Earth. All right then, see another local units currently in service. Not enough revs. Yeah, so we'll talk about the uh, locusts themselves at some point in the uh, stream. The route itself, by the way, developed by the River Games. Not a Dovetail Games route, it's a River Games route, making this a third party scenario. So, the same people who brought to us. Move the throttle to notch zero, then apply the train brake to braking one to bring this train to a controlled stop at the objective. Okay, not yet. Uh, so, same people who brought us the. Um What's it called? The Alps one. Um, so they brought Style of White and they brought us the uh, the Swiss one, which I can't remember the uh, name of. The um, Alpine one. Very good route. I do want to visit the... Uh, the uh, it's going to annoy me now, I'm not going to be able to remember the name of it, but... Um, yeah, I've read that's from the Traveling Real World. See how that all kind of fits together in the uh, in the Alps. It's nice and slow on this too, so 50 miles per hour out of Cornwall, which is down to five masses yard, so we do start to be about slow down as well. That's the right, you've got the, uh, the beach here at Penzance, a couple of brake walls, and then the pathway also comes off with the uh, railway line. I have been on that road, on that path, I have taken a few photos of the trains from there as well. I'll talk about the trip I had to Cornwall as well during the stream. So it was come, it was three parts to it: journey to Penzance and the day kind of spent in Penzance surrounding areas. Then it's the uh, trip to St Mary's, the Isle of Scilly. And then it's the trip back home to London, so the sleeper service. The sleeper, by the way, uh, probably the highlight of that trip actually. I can't imagine too many people on this channel have done a sleeper train, but essentially, yeah, it's like a hotel on wheels. You book a train seat, well, you book a train, and instead of a seat, you get a bed, and then you sleep on the train, it departs late at night, and it arrives in London, nice day in the morning. It allows you to uh, continue with your day today. And that actually was the release of another, I think it was a previous train to World Routes, the um, Brighton Mainline one. It was actually the day I went on that, uh, I just came back from that trip, so it worked out quite nicely for me in the end. Right, pass some braking and bring the train to a halt. 
got that. The brakes Set feel. the reverser <laughs> to the off position. Reverser off. Set the headlights to off. Headlights off. Press the engine stop engine button stop. to finally switch the master, the master key. key locked. There we have it. Good work. That is the basics covered. You are ready to head out there on your own. And there you go. That's the entire if you training. If any more questions, a manual can also be obtained that provides more details about the full functionality of this multiple unit. And that's the entire training uh, program of the old Patrol days. <laughs> that was a total of six minutes. Teach you how to drive the train. A total of 50 yards. Bish bash bosh. You know how train drive up. Right, let's have a look at the class 37 now. So like all train, and then we're going to do two scenarios. We'll do a trip up to St. Ives in the uh, Sprinter. We'll do a tri this a journey between Penzance and St. Austell in the 37, and then we'll do a modern day run as well. Let's, explore, let's go over to the training and let's have a look at the 37. So 37 used in this scenario for both freight runs and passenger not this runs. If you own the Northern Transfer 9 and the freight pack, the BR freight pack, then you also get extended Welcome freight runs as well. BR Class 37 locomotive in British Rail Rail Freight livery. During this brief introduction, we will go through the start and stop procedures. Before we climb aboard the locomotive, it is important to make sure the manual junctions are set correctly. All right, manual junctions. I've not seen that icon before. New one for the uh, pack, eh? Right, let's set ourselves a junction. Climb aboard the locomotive. Uh, throw it back to when it used to snow in the UK several years ago. So the itself was based in the 1980s. Switch the battery isolation to normal. And therefore there'll be a few uh, differences based on old Penzance uh, West Coast White. Sorry, West Coast. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, yeah, West Cornwall. West Cornwall Local and the um, modern day, essentially, uh, West Cornwall. Mm. Alright, we need to switch over to the other cab now. Set up the brake selector to vacuum brakes. Yeah, this is the main cab of the two. This is for goods. A lot of your time will be spent in the driver's seat. Take seats and let's move ourselves. Set the master key to activate the drive. Set the reverser as indicated in preparation. Go ahead and start the locomotive. Right, engine starts. About Set 30 the seconds. Train brake as indicated. Set the brakes to running. Wait for the reservoir to charge. That'll be the two handles uh, now down below. Use the reverser to set the direction of tr lights train and forwards. Head code. Lights on. Head uh, wiper to run. Probably important because it's snowing. As indicated. And, oh no, they are going. It's just a bit of a delay to get them going. Probably because it's an old air pressure system. If you can do it manually, you can do. Ah, tutorial, locked it off. Uh, release the handbrake, do that by twisting the old wheel on the right hand side. And then jump back into the range seat. Uh, welcome, Miss Cyclops, how are you doing? Yes, I'm on the lift, it's a train today. Uh, can't be a face on cost start. Oh, yes. There you go, right, stop wiping out. That's on a run. What we can do is just manually wipe it. Anything that's on there. Going to set the wiper to about medium speed, just get that snow off. Throttle on. Brakes released. Increase the throttle to start moving. Do not apply too much power too quickly. Right, let's do that 10 miles per hour. Turn off the throttle to maintain... So we're going to run it up to the end of the yards. Location, just pull the buffers. 
I must say these tutorials are nice and short, nice and simple. I like them that way. <laughs> Nothing too over the top. There we are, my little uh, Lights Loco 37 in VR Rail Freight. Great. Uh, just got it, very good. Uh, West Coast Finland's train spotter. How are you finding it so far? Also, welcome, channel. Welcome to chat. How are you today? So, we're going to run it to the stop location. We're going to it up to the four cars. Presumably, it will be these four cars that are nice and uh, available on the right hand side. Oh no, sorry. The ones out in front of us. There's a little bit of braking. From the the to be fair, doing this in snow conditions is probably not the best way to do it. In that, you get a wheel slip. Um, right, okay, so. Brakes need more early with those. Tiny bit of throttle. Actually, probably okay to start with. And there we go. Push it off. Down this curb to allow you to switch to the opposite curb. So we're going to set the train brake to shut down, which is the very far end. There we go. Now turn off the headlight. Headlight off. Wipers off. Set the reverser to off. Reverser off. Take out the master, and master key. key. Now prepare the route out onto the main line by correctly setting the manual junctions. Uh, do that manually from the map because I can't go on talk all that way. So set that junction there, set that junction there. One, two, one, and that is Sitting done. Set the driver's seat in the opposite car and prepare the local for driving. All right, so take a seat. Engines are running. Set the master key into place. Should I be back here? There we go. Master key on. Throttle to forward. Brakes released. Now let's charge up. And let's get moving. Also, a bit of wiper, just get a train. Window clip. Uh, Subnautica car, not a game I've heard of. Uh, well, not a game I'm aware of. Uh, this is Cyclops. So sublocation at St. Oster Line 1. So we must be at the east end line. Yes, we are. Short little journey. Let's get to focus on the uh, speed limits a bit. So we'll cut the... We'll put a little more throttle in just a bit. Get up to line speed of 15 miles per hour. And release the brakes. Uh, no Cyclops, you take care. Have a good one, dude. So the headlights, didn't I? Uh, headlights are... Which, which are they? Not that one, not that one. Instrument lights. Sander. Slow speed control. Engine start and stop. And the headlights. That's a horn. Um, headlights, there we go. And then I believe this train's also... Head... Actually, there we go. Not this case, but some models also have a head headlight as well. Right, increase throttle up to 70 miles per hour line speed now. I'm only traveling 2 miles in Ostor. So maybe we'll not go too fast, but we'll see what train can give us. Running relatively light, only 4 empty wagons attached to us. So far, so good. Uh, our train is much better. I don't know, Kerno. I, mean, I do like our train sim. Train sim world, there is something about it I do quite like. Especially the graphics, especially with the, uh, the physics. Okay, the actual train driving itself, the feeling of that is much better than train simulator, plus more uh, availability, but 
visually, this seems more appealing. The fact you can kind of walk around, see things up close as well. There are upside streets as well, I do quite like. Coming up to 60 miles per hour now. So it was a line side view of the train. Cut the throttle. Just add the train to uh, run same for a little bit. Eh, not bad, not bad at all. Put the tie bit break in just for the sake of uh, not entering the roll too fast and it's down here a bit of track. Okay, 28 miles to go now. Let's uh, apply the brakes and let's start slowing the train down. Now this is really where it comes to play. How well have I timed this because 37's not really known for its braking. It's known for its long distance haul, right? uh, long distance uh, hauling, but certainly not uh, for its braking. Uh, your next box you bought it when it wasn't fully out. It'll be up there now. Very good trends. Do enjoy it. Too far, I have had it. Whoops, ah, wrong way. Wrong way. Use the brakes. Yeah, okay. That's uh, killed off most of our speed. Um, yeah, so I actually had this route before as well, but uh, decided to wait, wait to hold off the streaming until it was kind of full official and out, with all the updates in place. So, yeah, we'll wait, we'll wait for it to be on official and then we're playing it today. So far, first looks, it's, it's looking alright, it's looking alright, no complaints yet with the Westbourne Walk. The Sprinter, the 150, definitely a fun little train to drive. This one does require a bit of practice, even now the braking's not quite uh, up to scratch. Passing now through St Austell, which is the easternmost station. And right now we are making a journey towards the siding, just outside the station. Woo, nope. That's fine. It's a red signal on the uh, station there, but proceed. Oh, okay, it's a red signal there, but it's not indicating the right. Show the green aspect so we could pass it for the siding. Ignore, <laughs> ignore the station signal. No, nope. but our own signals. In cab signaling before it even existed. Right, a bit of braking in. Slow the train down. Bring to a halt just before the stop markers. Gently does it. Right. And halt. Kind of halt. Again, not known for its braking. I'll be sure to uh, do it nice and early in future runs. Good work. That is the basics covered. A manual can be obtained that provides more details about the full functionality of this locomotive. Right. And that is the uh, tutorials over and done with. Now, ready for the fun part. So, in terms of scenarios, there are five scenarios, I believe. Whether or not I do them, I must admit, at least for the videos, I mean, the length of these, I mean, 100, so, under, just under an hour and a half, one hour, hour and five minutes, hour and a half, 40 minutes. They're not <laughs> short scenarios, I must say. Operator return service from Penzance to Churro, back and forth down the entire line. Uh, yeah, not just the Penzance with Night and Depot. They're not short runs, these. There you go, do a turn at uh, St. Earth as well. We'll see. I, I'll, I'll try and do them at some point, but uh, I don't know if they'll come straight away. Um, 70 scenarios and timetables. We've got a mix of 77 and uh, 150s. These are all short freight runs. So I'll try and give one of those a go at some point. They're 45 minutes, hour and four, 39, one hour. So you get about a half, 40 minutes or whatever. And then for the passenger services, it's a bit of a mix between, uh, so you've got short runs between St. Ives and Earth, about 17, 20 minutes. And the longer runs, just under an hour to an hour between St. Austin and Penzance, depends which station you stop at, which service patterns you do. That's quite a nice one. Bring a service to Charlie 52, about a minute or so from start to finish. Um, right, so let's start off, of course, with a passenger run. So we'll start off in Penzance. Which offers an hostel, so we'll find a nice, we'll find a short one. It's not really short as such, but uh, 47 minutes. An hostel Penzance. Uh, do you have? There you go. Because that's a true row. That is 
not quite towards the end. Yeah, go on. We'll do that then. 39 minutes, 7.52 service to Truro. We'll do a service out of um, St. Austell as well. And that will likely be the, the modern day service towards the end. So that's one thing that I've got like, a little bonus for. We may even see the modern day livery on this line because, you know, that's just how it works. But for now, let's bring the service into play. So unlock the master controller, set the reverser to forward and unlock the left hand doors. Uh, I can't remember how you close the doors on the left hand side, so open, open doors left, open doors right, guard buzzer, sanding, coupling, uncoupling, somewhere there's a door shut button, where well, most of the driving is done by the, uh, doors on the guard, I'll set the DRH to take as a reminder, I'll try and find it, I'll find it, if I don't, then I don't, <laughs> it's the story of my life, this, uh, what can I remember, what can I not, uh, deadlights it's head, uh, sorry, headlights it today, must, Switch markers come off, sorry. Instrument lights turn is on. Turn on the destination lights. Tail lights off. So yeah, mark, sorry. Mark this tails off, markers on. Uh, compressor speed up, yeah, that off. Uh, the guard panel on the door behind you. Yeah, so that'll be if I squeeze out. That is this over here. So open close ah. Ah, it's non-functional. Okay, interesting. The previous one that, uh, well, you know, it's locked the doors. I'll try and figure out where the door lock button is at some point. Previous uh, scenarios, um, Rivet did manage to get the guard panels to work. On this occasion, obviously not. Right, brakes release, throttle up, and let's get moving. Surely, it must work. Uh, no, it's static on this occasion. Uh, no safety systems either, because this is pre uh, AWS DSD, so none of that's going to work. The AWS functionality brought in the 1990s and made permanent, I believe, in 2003. So that was caused by the Ladbrook Grove and um, Southall crashes. And since then, Edu certainly has been a requirement in all British Rail trains. So there we have it. A 150, 150 units. Now on its way to true right. Uh, so what's everything so far? Good question, uh, Damien. What are you guys think so far on the uh, on the chat? So far for me, it's a good looking route. The 150, not terrible as a train. The sounds all right. They're passable. And driving, they're not too bad either. Not not a terrible train. Not a terrible train. I mean, the 150 itself, even the Hot Springs family, it's a relatively low tech train. It's not really much in the units for you to really do as such. But um, even then, as long as you get your basics going, you can't really complain. 37 again. Sounds could be improved. Sounds definitely kind of lacking part of this uh, of that little unit, but. Driving wise, feels really good. Again, so you learn how to do the brakes and that, how to time it. Biggest challenges of the low coat. They have the challenges. I wouldn't say this is a perfect route, but it is a good one. It is a good one. Uh, at this point, the handle does not work, but that isn't it. I mean, trim is not made by the same person, made by 31314. Um, no. So, that's because so the 313314 units, uh, Denzo, were developed by Dotel Games. This isn't a Dovetail Games train or route, this is uh, Rivet Games. This is third parties, different developer, different company entirely. That have got for train some mods. So, on this occasion, you are right, they're not by the same people, because it's made by a different developer entirely. Um, so, is this open world to an extent? It's open world around the railway lines that it features. Worldwide? Kind of. So, in an anomaly feature, you have country features. So you've got UK, US, Germany. You've got Canadian routes. You've got a Swiss route. Um, you've got a French route as well. So, you've got six countries in the sim at the moment. Slowly growing uh, from time to time. 
very quite hot in this, I must admit, in the cab. That's more like it. Um, yeah, so, Trans World. It's not open, open world, but it's, it's not completely shut. Alright, line speed, 75 miles per hour. 3.7 miles to St. Earth, which will be our first station. After St. Earth, we're stopping at Hale, Camborne, Redthroof, and Truro. One, two, three, four, five stops in this scenario. Uh, not even favourite route, Denzo. I mean, Dovetail Games are based in the UK, so it's just probably the easiest country to uh, develop routes for. A little bit of frame rate drop in there. That comes with scenery loading. Now, when I've rode on this part of the line in real life, that was inbound to Penzance on a castle set, a class 43 with four carriages, and the outbound, I believe, was it a 52, the loco at the front of the Night Riviera? I'd have to double check the Toxa classification for that. But, um, yeah, it's loco horde with old Mark. Three wagons. Very comfy beds, I must say, as well. I've been on both the Caledonian and the Night Riviera sleepers. And Night. Swallow me. Uh, Night Riviera, definitely the. Uh, in my opinion, nicer of the two trains. I'll do it again. Fortunately, I work in a rail, so I do get a slight discount. So I must admit, for the sleeper trains, it's only a very minute discount. Um, still, definitely worth a, a trip. I bought this, Scratch is the first Great Western Blue, again D150202, we're driving at 15202. Ah, okay, interesting. There you go. Uh, you personally like some more foreign modern routes, also old German stock, but also like the 800 by model you can run it on any routes. Just, yeah, 900 by model would be quite fun. Certainly runs on this line, certainly runs on Great Western uh, down towards. Um, Paddington, so did you get that to nice stretch track of it running? Yeah, it can run most lines. But it also runs up to Edinburgh as well. well Edinburgh, Glasgow, with the Avanti West Coast. Not yet, I don't think, actually. They're still sorting it out, but eventually they're going to replace the Voyagers on the um, Avanti route, former group, uh, Virgin Trains, to uh, run up as well. So, though, it will come soon. Uh, what's a short? It's two-car set, uh, Captain Mel. This is pretty standard for most British regional routes. I mean, this line, in terms of passenger numbers, modern day, one of the least used bits of track, especially outside of summer. And back in the 1980s, this line was, well, basically unheard of, to be, to be honest. Uh, oh, and you're one of those that uh, cry for HSTs, are you? I mean, to be fair, People were saying about the Delta 6. The Delta 6 being replaced by HSTs, the HSTs are rubbish trains that weren't the future. Now the HSTs are going, they're the greatest trains in the world. I'm sure in 40 years' time when the IET is being replaced, we'll be crying for those, and whatever's replacing them will also be the uh, worst train in the world. I've used Flight Gear uh, Nightmare. I hope to do videos on some freeware flights at some points. I'm not sure when I'll do those, but the freeware flights in the series will be pretty good. Wireless flights another one I'll have a bit as well. But I have done. Uh, like guess it's a decent little sim. I can't find some free wet. Cheers may not be good, Kai. Yes, it'd be very good. Yeah, yeah, my line, my railway. A reference that only me and Kai will know. Uh, right, let's put the brakes on. My word, this is not a great train for braking. As long as it's up before the red semaphore. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Open doors left. Now, can I find this door closed? Engine start, engine stop, guard buzzer. Got that. A bit of sand as well if we need sand. Uh, window, clipboards, random lights, destination blinds. Fully functional, very nice. Uh, let's go out the front. There you go, Camborne. Next one, red roof. Red roof. Truro. Truro. Right, uh, yeah, so there's no way to lock doors, I think, from this end. 
probably there is, but I just can't find it. We'll just carry on. Uh, welcome, Fumin like fan. how are you doing? What channel with chats? How are you today? Breaks release. Drops all up. See, same people said the same thing about the 43s back in the 1960s, though, in. People said that the great the, uh, the 43s, HSTs, were pretty rubbish replacements. And actually, when they first started running down to Cornwall, they had quite a few problems with the Delta X actually returned for a couple of years before they all got before the 43s got repaired and modified to run down to Cornwall properly. And these trains, the old generation, never run about their problems either. Uh, carefully, Campbell's a bit rough. I've only been through Campbell a couple of times in real life, Chris. I've never stopped to get out. Next station, Hale. Uh, so 1.2 mile venture. So we won't do too much more in the cab. At some point on a late, uh, longer bit stretch of track, we will have a look inside the passenger cabin and see what they get uh, amenity-wise in this uh, past the train. Uh, not a fan of the Carlton Mark 3s, not enough table seats. Mm, I can kind of agree with that. Although when I went, so I stayed in the uh, accessible bit of the train and actually got the table stroke massive legroom all to myself. A relatively quiet train, not much in terms of passengers, so hey ho. A uh, girlfriend there about two years back, you know, 10 miles south of there. Ah, nice. This is a nice part of the country, Chris, you live at. Coastal view or you're away from the water? I've had a couple of trips down to Cornwall, well, let's say a couple, I've had two trips down to Cornwall, and the latter was not even to really stay in Cornwall, I'd rather go down to the um, Isle of Scilly instead, just passing through via Penzance and Land's End Airport. Uh, you live on naval, ah, okay. Are you military yourself, Chris, or are you just living on your naval base? Or your family, presumably, down as well. Uh, you'd rather have 150 over HST. Really? Ooh, interesting. Oh, in the controversial state. Because you're again going, you're not too far from here either, aren't you? You're not too far from um, the Old West Somerset, which is slightly northeast of here. Like 20 miles northeast. The Old Hell Viaducts. Probably the more, well, the most famous bit of the routes. Even if it's just a relatively generic brick viaduct. Right, hit the brakes. Service and counting. Very good, dude. You see, this isn't America, so we're not going to go all thank you for your service, good sir, on this. <laughs> right, let's have a look at the uh, passenger cab, shall we? While we have our stationery. So, this is first class, yes, the is first class. They feature exactly the same seats as standards, exactly the same seats on the layout, it just has a door. A nice little sliding door. Uh, standard class, 2x3 seating. This is the old um, tourist open layout. Yes, I know my seating layouts. 2x3, tourist open. Um, Edge to the back, you got yourself a toilet. Flash onto the rear carriage. And there you go, you got yourself another set of seats. And then another first class section at the back. Notice, no accessible carriage, no accessible carriage, no accessible toilet. This train uh, predates accessibility. Modern units have got the toilets and all that, but uh, these older units certainly don't have the accessibility within them. This is the older uh, days of institutionalist. Uh, I'm supposed to societal uh, needs for the stuff. <laughs> Good, it's a bit cringy here in the UK. We do cringy stuff for the NHS instead. Oh, what's wrong with clapping for them on Thursdays? Um, have you been to London Underground? I've done it in Train Smart, Martin. I've not done it in real life. I'd love to, living in London myself. I do work in the railways. Not for Underground, though. But um, if, if an opportunity comes up, if TFL, if you're watching this, give me a ring, I'll have you drive a train for you. Or just stick me in an ATO one, and let train drive itself. I'll go to press the button. Um, Take a look at Penzance. Well, what's your local station in London, if you don't mind me asking? And how long would it get, take you to get answer from Penzance? Well, 
Oh, no, I think from Plymouth it was about an hour and a half. Captain Mav already uh, explained the rock. Um, yes, I can roll. I'm not going to say the, oh, the job itself, so I do dispatch, gate line, customer service. What company? I'm not going to reveal. That bit, I'm not going to go into too much detail with. But um, I do dispatch, customer service, gate line, uh, clean up if things go a bit south. It's the standard station staff, basically. Station staff. It's really, it's just three hours in Taunton, really. Gosh, okay, I never thought, I thought it was that far out. I say from Plymouth, it's only about an hour and a half, two hours, but then again, Cornwall's a lot bigger than it uh, seems on a map, I must admit. I don't know if that's because it's really slow lines down here, or loads, there's no motorways in Cornwall, so I don't know if it's just down to the fact that it's just really slow out there compared to the rest of the country, or it's just bigger than you think it is. The world's always shrinking, apart from Cornwall, it's grown about 500 miles since the uh, last 50 years. So the next station is Camborne. Because there's no dra driver safety systems on this train, it means I've got the ability to join my passengers in the cab because, you know, health and safety. So yeah, welcome to uh, the first class section of this train. I must say, it is pretty. It is pretty, this route. Speaking of which, what's the line speed? Actually, I should check this stuff. <laughs> uh, right, so the line speed is 60. We're doing 50. Slide people climb, brakes are released, we're not really accelerating, so now I have to do. Uh, 45 to Exeter, 90 to Plymouth, many hours to Cornwall, gosh. Oops, send more seats, I'm sure that's uh, every rail worker's dream right there. Also, a bit noisier. Woo, a bit noisier in this section train. Window, open and close, very good. Great song, go west, pet shop boys. Uh, evening, William, how are you doing? Welcome to Channel Ops Chat. Uh, this service is not safe. Is is now not safe. What do you mean, Kai? My driving is excellent. So you are first-hand accounts to that fact. Uh, thank you again, uh, Denzo. Thank you for the reservation. Much appreciated, dude. Much appreciated. Horn as you get past the crossing. Which have the sound. No barriers, but has got the sound. Very good. Let's take ourselves. Ah. Crossing train. Uh, you've done Plymouth to Taunton 153. All stops. It was a long afternoon. I've done um, Stevenage to Moorgate, all stops in a three, well, 313 actually, my very first time in a 313, I think. Maybe. Um, that was a long afternoon, since now replaced by, was it a 313? Yeah, Great Northern, 313. Uh, since replaced by 707. On the right, abandoned station, I'm not sure what the name of the station is, but I'm sure someone in chat, aka Owen, will be able to tell us which station this is, and what year it closed. Ah, oh, my abandoned stations, I've visited a couple of them in the past. I won't say which ones because, you know, trespassing, but uh, yeah, there's a couple of them that you can access quite easily. There's a couple of them. You can't. Um, yeah, I like my old uh, abandoned stations. Welcome, Adam, how are you doing? Hop channel. Let's chat to you today. Uh, we'll see if there's a stop sign on the track in this game. <laughs> No comment on that one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my stop sign. Why'd you crash into it? Uh, a bit of a uh, viaduct coming up. Well, not really viaduct, it's just uh, a little bit of track. Secure the line a bit. Uh, 
when did I start streaming on making YouTube vids? Um, it was in April 2016, I think. 16 or 17, I started making videos. The channel's been out, well, the channel's existed a bit longer than that, but I didn't really do anything with it. But since 2016, April, I've been doing videos and streams. Started off with Rocket League, but obviously simulation was more my specialist area. And it's where most of my views come from now, so simulation, it's dope. By the way, from Camborne now, we'll prepare ourselves to slow and stop. Uh, what happens if you overspeed in a tight turn in sim? Uh, you can derail, Martin. It is possible to derail. It does take a bit of work to do, but it's not impossible. Uh, do I prefer flight sim or train sim mod 2? For simming needs, and in real life uh, play, or even more trains over planes. More people watch the flight sim stuff, but I personally prefer the trains. Um, yeah, I put you on mutes, Captain Cow, because I'm the one putting you on mutes. I explained the rule about talking about trains and stuff. Obviously, you've ignored it again, so next time, I'm going to get rid of you. Um, what happens if you speed on this? Yes, derail. You're awesome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for kind words. I'm glad you've uh, glad you're enjoying us so far. Yeah, make you feel like you found me at the end of 18. Make you at Wally 19. Now you're at college, gosh. Since then, dude, I've. Uh, Changed jobs twice, and I now work on the railways. <laughs> Must say that the railway is by far the uh, the best job I've had so far. Seventeen viewers, like I say, train sim don't get the views on this channel. It's not the views I wish I did. Which is a shame. But it is what it is. Uh, you've heard that the emergency door release on the passenger doors work. Go check it, please. Yep, yeah, we'll check it next station uh, at Camborne. Denzo. You have got the uh, the emergency door release. It's a little lever on top of the door, it's a little red lever. Twist that and force the doors open with it. Very wide platform on the uh, the upland, I must say. Obviously, from a good uh, station, this I can imagine that's where the extra width has come from. Right, now I have to do so. Brakes hold, throttle off, doors open. See, I'm getting confused off the keyboard now. I'm normally driving rail driver. On this occasion, keyboard. Uh, right, jump. Hang on. Let me just free myself from the cab there. There we go. The emergency lever does not work, I'm afraid. Doesn't do anything. Nope, right, not dude. On this occasion, the emergency levers do not work. Got the old platform displays here, the old CRT screens. Very odd, those. Doors. Next station, Red Roof. Love Corona Railways, the same as we're doing to your 18, when something's available. Good luck with it, Owen. I mean, the railway job's always available, always popping up. In your case, probably Great Western or Cross Country you have down there. Um, not easy to get into. The entry can be quite difficult, but once you're in, it's very, uh, very much worth it. Favourite train livery? Probably. I must admit, I don't really know. I do apologise, a bit tired. Uh, I'm on shift at the moment, so yeah, I am that good. Um, I don't know, I quite like the old Virgin liveries on their trains. Southeastern IT is pretty nice, that stock blue with light blue doors. I don't my ITs, though. It's an IT kind of train, it's the same Japanese family, but the old 395 is slightly different. Um, I'm 
I'm not really sure what my favourite would be. I don't really take. I must. Yeah, I don't, don't, don't take much counts in deliveries. Um, since the easing of COVID measures, you've had so many ra uh, Rangers make the most of your 1617 saver. It's worth it, dude. Great good discount on those. I hope you're using them at the correct times too. You know, people have had to stop and uh, send over to the revenue officers because they had their things out too early. Naughty that. <laughs> nah, it's most times education. You don't be too rough to passengers. You explain to them what the issue is. If they're a serial offender, then you're a person to the uh, revenue officers. If not, then you can generally get away with once or twice making a mistake. So, next up is Redroof, our penultimate stop. Following station will then be Truro, where this train terminates. Oh, yeah, it's the front fresh air, fresh air intake. <laughs> I'm just going to cut back on the throttle. Reduce speed to 40 miles per hour now because that's line speed dropping. Sunny on the left hand side is a little downward facing triangle. If you catch a cab ride and need local units, past present what would it be? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, it would either be class 390 Pendolino up to Glasgow, or a class 395 uh, Javelin to Edgefleet International, probably down to uh, Dover, or Folkestone. The line out of Folkestone heading out to the east is fantastic. Um, why the Pendolino? Because the Pendolinos are probably my favourite trains in the country. Why the 305? Because they're the fastest trains in the country. So the Pendolino's got 125 miles per hour, the Javelin's up to 140. So they do have their benefits, the other southeastern units. Right, welcome to Red Roof. Yeah, who'd want to, who'd want to care about an old Delta? Well, Delta would be really fun, but that's old and grossy. For me, my this generation of trains is probably my favourite. Well, this one or the next one. I mean, my favourite trains are the three nine. Well, is it, is it any network train, so the 165, 166, 365, uh, 465, 466. Those five units of trains are my favourites. The odd networkers, they are fantastic trains. Then that's followed by the 390. Then the 395, the two high-speed units. But I don't know. There's nothing about a networker that is sweet and simple, and they do their job. Their uh, bulgy little fronts. Um, I wouldn't, I'd like a cab ride one, of course, but if I get like a one chance to do a cab ride, it'd be one of the fast units. I love Networker, but they are slow and boring when it comes to driving. Can't be the high speed stuff, eh? <laughs> but no, I do like my Networkers, they are grand little trains. Alright, next station, True Road. Uh, welcome, Gorilla Gamer. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Jack's. How are you today? How are you doing? It's been a bit up to 71 skins, so max drops it out. Let's get it going. Let's 
just a reminder, any talk of flight sim or train sim streams, I just mute. I'm bored of the, uh, the old arguments, so I'll have your warnings, just get a mute. I've got to say, um, River Games, their scenery has always been fantastic. Always been fantastic. Really puts you in the place of the, uh, the other routes. Isle of Wight, scenery wise, pretty good. The, um, I can never remember the name of the Highlands one. Don't know why. It's a very good route. One of my favourites in this sim. Um, yeah, that's another one that the scenery really does uh, take away. Okay, the tree does see could have been improved, but in terms of the actual graphical spread, Fantastic. And this one really puts you in a heart of corn with this. A favourite road transport so far? Um it's not a tough one, so there are some really good routes. I think my favourite is probably... It's either the South Eastern High Speed or Great Western Express. Brighton Mainline's good, the long commuter, but one thing that both South Eastern and Great Western have is a mix of both commuter services and high speed services as well. So you're not just stuck so Actually, they're both common network as well. So you get one with 166, the other one, 465. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's a good mix now you can either do stopping every single station, so they call uh, commute service, or you can do high speed. So start at one end of the map, finish the other end of the map, with maybe a few intermediate stops on the way. Uh, so Greyerson had that in the form of the HST, Class 43, and Southeastern had that in the form of the 395, the, uh, the Javelin. So. Yeah, it's, it's a good mix, and as a result, those two are my top routes in this platform. Bakerloo is pretty good as well, the train to Bakerloo line. But see, yeah, my top two favourites are Great Western and South Eastern High Speed. I must say, Great Western's longevity for me has been actually uh, <laughs> nothing short of remarkable. It was the very first year that came out. So back when the sim was known as um, Trenton World, God, what was it known back in the day? Uh, Sam, pa not Sam Patrick Road. That's what it's known as now. Um, CSX Heavy Hall. Back when it was known that one American freight route. The very first DLC that released in the August of that year was a um, Great Western route. And ever since then, playing it like mad. Another abandoned station on the right hand side. I'm not sure which station that is, is, but certainly no longer in use. Another warehouse of some sorts. Again, probably more of a freight stop than a actual station that people already uh, used. So. Once we get to the Truro, we'll then do a run of the old St. Ives line. Going halfway through time to above uh, Brighton Manor. Gosh, that's a lot of services doing there, Callum. What was it? 400 services and about 200, so gosh. <laughs> you must be on that non-stop then. Oh, good luck with the, uh, the latter half of the routes. More thrusting now going uphill and slowing down a bit. Uh, I'd love the 323 in this. I mean, modding new streets. Shane's no, no new street is available. Um, yeah, 323 pretty good. The old, uh, actually, I'm, I'm, well, 
it's, it's an odd one out in terms of terrain. It's built by... I can't remember the manufacturer of it. It's the only train ever released, they ever built and manufactured. Because after production was done, they went bankrupt. Um, yeah, they use the old Metcam VFFF motors. Pretty nice little motors. Yeah, cross country uh, Birmingham would be pretty good. Has the longest stretch of. Well, it's got, sorry, it's got the steepest bit of track in the entire country. The uh, Birmingham cross country. I can't remember the uh, exact gradient. We need to do that at some point. I have got Train Smart 2022. And that train and route is included as part of the default pack, so we do actually need to properly do it at some point. Hunzel it, there you go. Uh, do you use underground often in this? Yes I do, Tactical Duck. Yes I do. As a Londoner myself, and someone who uses the Bakerloo line daily, mostly daily, um, yeah, <laughs> I use it quite a lot in the sim. Downhill bit of track, 1.1% gradients, just slowly. Oh, the brakes every so often, just to strain from uh, going too fast. I've got to say, it's not a difficult train to drive the old uh, 150. It responds to what you want. It's a very easy train to drive. So yeah, back in the 19, late 1960s and 1970s, uh, British Rail, looking to introduce a new family of trains to replace the old rail cars, uh, put out a test for new manufacturers. I can't remember the manufacturers in particular, but I think one was Burrell, so one was um, East Lancashire, one was uh, York, and um, essentially they were asked to produce a diesel multiple units. That was cheap to produce, cheap to run, cheap to build, so they kept the 1550, and the 151, and ultimately the old 150 was the uh, design that was chosen to operate a feature of the trails. So this is the design that won, and all trains after the sprinters and super sprinters that came after, all based on this one design. It's 1377, gosh, that is it steep. <laughs> we'll do it at some point, maybe next next week we'll try and do a train stream on the train since 22 on the old. Uh, Birmingham cross country. Also, we need to do a 3 on 3 stream as well. The new one that's on Trains in World. And we need to do a fishing stream. My first one in about two years, actually. So that's another one we need to uh, sort out as well. It was Bassmaster came out. I was going to do it last week, but on that day my microphone decided no more to work anymore. It was something about, well, I spent a couple of quids to rebuild my microphone setup. Hoping now it's running to a bit more. Uh... Yeah, hopefully now running a bit more without failure. Down to 30 miles per hour. Now approaching Truro. Let this train terminates. Please remember your bloggings when leaving the train. Thank you for riding regional railways. Right, let's bring train to a halt. Let's bring it to a stop. Down to 13 now, so you should be able to go over the point where it's problems. We'll continue the slowdown. Seven left hand side they're holding. Uh, not yet, yeah, not just now. There's another route that the uh, 150 the yard sprints ride on. Get a lift for that going. Might be able to redo another one of those modern day runs. I did a stream that a little while ago, riding like a modern day on the Transpennine. I'll, I'd love to do another one at some point. I'd love to do another one. So hopefully that's a uh, plan for the future. Ah, 
laptop marker somewhere behind us. Fair enough, this will do. Uh, doors release. Oh, okay, no doors release. Uh, <laughs> welcome to True Road. Silver medal, I'll take that for a first run. Level 92 on the profile, level 4 most common work, and level 5. Level 4 on the class 150, just under 40 minutes that took us. We'll uh, continue to open the doors, at the very least. Uh, and we'll show the camera, I guess, as well. So, headlights come off, headlights come on. This is not the car, the cab, even. Also, if master key comes off. Before I forget. Throttle off. Brakes max. Train off. Master key off. There we go. Cool. And that's the train set up. Ready to run to present. Use a 44. We're not going to wait for that. There's a map. There's a true rope. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Right, let's jump back to the main menu. Let's do a run now on the St. Ives line. So we have five stations branch. You have St. Earth, Leyland Sandlings, Leyland, Carbis Bay, and St. Ives. So we'll jump into the explore mode, jump into a timetable. 150 again, continue. And we'll start off, I think, we'll start off at uh, St. Ost, sorry, St. Earth, because we've been on this station. Therefore, the rest of the line will be all a mystery to us as it opens up in front. Uh, St. Ives, St. Earth. Yeah, no, that's the return leg. It's a slightly longer return leg. Interesting. Okay, well, that will do. Um, right, let's spawn them in. As the English trains, what's top three? Class one, Class 465. Class one six five, class four six five, class one six six, class one six five. There you go. Right, let's begin. Um, so, welcome to St. Earth. Ooh, unlock doors right inside. Pass the key in. Reverse that to forwards. Mark lights on. Tail lights off. And destination roll set to do St. Ives. Uh, welcome, Michael Gelson. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chats. How are you today? Hope you're keeping well. Welcome to St. Earth. Currently on platform 3, the siding. Uh, sorry. Yep, the siding, the um, terminating platform. A few wagons on the old uh, far end there. Platform 4 would have once been. Very peaceful station. Oop. Luggage rack, let's put some suitcases on it. I'm sure leaving baggage unattended is the smartest thing you can do at a train station. I'm sure I've put the baggage down and now I'm going to skip on our train. Let's jump in the cab, lock the doors, and let's get going. Uh, you can make, uh, well, I've made a great western livery in this uh, train spotter, so we'll have a look at that next. But could I make a great, nor could I make a good northern on livery in this? Probably. A bit of time practice, I could certainly get something going. Next station. Leyland, so we won't be stopping at Leyland Sandlings. Potentially then, that's what the other time is for. And your yeah, southbound uh, platform. How long is the call DC in miles? I must admit, I don't know off of my head, uh, Emad. Let me have a quick Google for you. Uh, West Cornwall Local. There's a Wikipedia for all these routes. So, uh, probably they'll tell us. Uh, so the route length is 44 miles. 44 miles of track to drive on. Uh, make a bit. Of, that's that's. I mean, that's an option you can, can do. Uh, West Coast Mountain Train Spot up. Put it out on the uh, the old Leeds line. That's the not Trans line. That's the. I can't remember that line now. I know what you're talking about though. It's something I'll probably do in the future. If you, see something, if you see something that doesn't look right, speak to staff or text the British Transport Police on 61016. See it, say it, sort it. My other favourite one is... Uh, what is it? Um, it's the Please wear a face covering one. How does that one go? Uh, 
So let's fight together. I have to keep everyone safe. That one. I never remember how the fourth thing goes. Uh, nope, we're on a regional rails train there, Michael. Regional railways. Welcome to... Nope, this is Lent Sandling. Next station. Thought we want, sorry. We're skipping this one, I think. Uh, yes, yes we are. Sorry, not stopping. Sorry passengers, bye bye. This is not our station. Bye bye. Uh, Paddington or King's Cross. Um, so, Great Western operates out of Paddington. Uh, Tactical Duck. That was Northern, very nice. What, what's he doing on the rail? So these are the sand things. It's just giant sand pits. That's all really. This tiny little branch line. Also, I still remember the, uh, the old John Motson announcement about the uh, Euros taking place at the stations. There's train conductor. Very nice. Not a bad job, that. Not a bad job. Get, get to see some of the scenery on your day-to-day -day work, so... Yeah, not bad. Uh, well, my friend and I spot at Thornton with points at each other when I uh, said, if you see, that doesn't look right. <laughs> ah, we're all jokes, though. Heating, yep, plenty of heating on for certain. Crew lights, probably important. Cab lights, yeah, nothing else that I really need to worry about. Here comes our station. Uh, what's up here? Uh, there is TPWS. Okay, well, I'll turn those on now. Quite a lot of circuit breakers. Max breaks out now because it's quite a short platform and we're going downhill. Welcome, Craig, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chat. How are you today? Doors open. We'll put the instrument lights on as well. Get the brightness in here. The mob is stationary at Sandling. Not for very long. We might have a quick look on the platform. At the very least, we're going to touch this post start at and we're going to do some unattended baggage on the trolley here. Thank you very much. Also, map. And more unattended baggage. Gosh, this is a. Uh, Security man's dream, that. Six suitcases unattended on the platform. Nobody knew left in there. Nobody will ever know. Right, lock doors, let's get going. Brakes released. What's up? You're from Northern as well. What do you do then? Train spots up. Should have the uh, penis in line to train to not to. <laughs> 150 is alongside the 158. You never know, one for the future. I'm sure that'll be uh, an achievement in itself. Visit Peniston. You're a train driver. Hmm, okay, I've got my doubts for that, I must admit, uh, train sponsor. How old are you? Fourth Tenacious 2. Um. Unopinionated, I must admit. Unopinionated, I admit. If they build it, they build it. I'll use it. If they don't build it, they don't build it. I'll stick to go to the main line. Honestly, my opinions on HS2 are very, uh, neutral. I can certainly agree with some of the arguments in that the 20 minute benefit isn't really that high, but I can also agree with the fact that one, it's a futuristic rail that British Railway really needs, and takes suggestion of the Coast main line, so. Yeah, my my opinion is very unopinionated. Uh, can you switch up? Sure, next station, Fortnite Champion. We'll do an exterior departure, not a problem. Gosh, this is a steep bit of track here. 1.7 up now. Very scenic, very pretty. Forgive a bit of track this. Also, I've completely given up on the timetable schedule. I mean, what, 11.07, 11.08? Yeah, we're not going to stick to any of that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, am I finding the British Rail Class 800s? I've got no negativity to see towards them. I've used them a couple of times. They're IET high speed trains. Can't complain. Uh, yes, Sarah, we're on train sim today. Train sim mod 2. West Cornwall local. Uh, best part comes just after Carbis Bay. Well, we're here for an adventure then. So, Carbis Bay, we did the last, well, plasma stop Carbis Bay. Knives, final stop. Transit 1 and 2, F6520. Very nice, Sarah. Good mix of Sims there. Very good mix of Sims. Alright, we're 0.8 miles away from Carbis now. So hopefully, because that was a short route to slow down. I've noticed the beach on the inside. Very pretty, this. Very pretty indeed. Oh yeah, there is. You're not bragging at all. If anything, I own way more simulators. Not really a brag. You do what you do. Own what you own. No competition to it. Joshua Lang, how are you doing, dude? It's been a while, man. Okay, another 1.7% grade uphill. Almost a roller coaster to this line. No, I'm alright, dude. I'm doing alright. How are you doing? Welcome, channel. Welcome to the chats. Right, let's cut the brakes now. We want to put some downhill. Gosh. Hit the brakes. <laughs> oh, but the scenery. The scenery, though. Jim can't see it because of the blimmin' door in the way. That is pretty. It's almost as bad as the, uh, what's it called, uh, Parkwood line, before you guys have tamped it, with all the CL bashing it with his, uh, metal bar. Uh, busy with work, long time to see you with that Yeah, no, it's dude. And there is about work too, like I say. Life comes first. There's no set, like, you have to watch the channel, you subscribe, follow me. But, um, like I say, tune in whenever you can, dude. There's no massive rush. But it's, it's good to see you again. It's like Warhawk. I've not seen Warhawk in about nine months. He turned up again last week. It's like, whoa, dude, I thought you died. <laughs> no, I'm glad you guys are keeping all right. I'm glad you guys are keeping all right. <clears throat> Right, so doing a external departure now. So as we depart from Carbis Bay, uh, there we go, just about got yourself in the door. We'll, uh, we'll allow the last few passengers to board the train. So we won't depart just yet. We'll let you board. Oh, we'll be nice today. We're in a good mood. Uh, in a minute, go around the corner, go behind the hill, in real life, get a lovely view of the uh, loveliest and Ives to come around. Well, let's uh, have an eye open before that. Uh, does Train Squad 2 have the Channel Tunnel? No, Tactical Dark, it doesn't. If not, do you think it'll be good? Yeah, well, kind. <laughs> I mean, if it's a run from, say, London. Well, not even London. They've got London as far as Ashford, so they probably could send it down to Epsley quite easily. But, it'd be a route. If, they'd set, if they went as far as Calais, half of it would be Tunnel. If they did the Channel Tunnel at the very least, so between. Um, so if you, if you did Euro Tunnel routes, you have Channel Tunnel, which is the main tunnel itself. You have Eurostar, which is the high speed passenger train, and you have um, Euro Tunnel, which is the freight and lorry driving. If you did that, that would be all the tunnel. Uh, 
<laughs> Thank you, Dr. Beeching, for the one pound. It was a class one five D and BR. Here I did not run this line. It was a class one five. Uh, come back, come back, Beeching. Hang on, let me let me finish driving the train. I go back to that message. <laughs> Of course, beating himself would, uh, get his two pence in. Right, we're only 0.8 miles away from St. Ives. I'll get back to that message in two seconds. Thank you very much, though. Much appreciated. It's the, uh, the benefit of going through Streamlabs. You can put whatever name you want down. No one will ever know who it was. <clears throat> Uh, no sense for talking. If you got to go, you got to go, dude. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you again, hopefully, quite uh, soon. Take care, dude. Have a good one. Bye bye. <clears throat> yeah, I must admit, uh, what's well, explained? Train spotting. The last person who admitted they were a train driver, they were an underground driver. They were 12 years old and uh, had no association to underground in any way, shape, or form. I have my doubts on the road with you. Your father is a guy, I can guess, but 21 year old train driver. Not impossible, but not very frequent, I must say. Yes, yeah, so now on the downhill stretch track, and as you come around the corner, hopefully, <clears throat> you get a pretty good view of St. Ives. Yeah, the scenery in this, absolutely fantastic. Twenty-one years old, four trains. Yeah, sorry, dude. I'm gonna call bugs on your claim. I'm afraid. Completely bogus. All right, nice and slowly. Up to the buffers. Uh, nothing like in real life, at least not in summer 2020. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that Snipes has had a massive upgrade since the. Uh, 1980s. <clears throat> right, let's see what odd Dr. Beeching wanted to say to us. Uh, how can players in Australia and New Zealand stay down the routes in 21 Ox Hobart? Um, so, when the routes. Um, so, originally the route was meant to release a couple of weeks ago, but due to a few issues with the. Well, they found a few issues with it, a few bugs and all that, and so they decided, Dr. Games, to just delay the release of the routes. That, however, came after they initially published it. Um, thank you, I'm beaching for the £1. Uh, click the channel, there's a video of him looking at 390 with voice 10 year old. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yep, yeah, sorry, Oscar's mainline. That's the uh, end of that. <clears throat> Alright, thank you, I'm uh, beaching for the £1. Let's have a quick year. So, what was originally the train on this line when it first opened? Well, it's at the era this is set in 1980s. And then, have a moment to look around at St. Ives, and then we'll do the uh, the modern day recreation. Oh god, ah. Okay, can you put bags on the, uh, on the blue ones? The Ruby Games luggage suitcase there. Also, let's pop up a modern day picture of St. Ives as well, since you say it's very different. Uh, let's have a look. 
So, Monday St. Ives, it's now, looks like... This. Uh, open vision new tab. Doesn't necessarily look that different. You got a waiting shelter now. That's, uh... What? Used to be over... Well... It used to be nothing, now it's a waiting shelter. Uh, gate there, something from too far. That's just nothing now. There's your exit path. It doesn't look that dissimilar, I must admit. It doesn't look different at all. A few houses in the background of hills. House over there. I don't know, I disagree, dude. It doesn't look too dissimilar from the, uh, the old British Rail days. Right, uh, so, the original trains that ran this line wasn't one five. Uh, 150, but rather uh, it's class 158. I mean, it's not Dovetail Games' route to uh, beating, it's a River Games route, it's not Dovetail Games who made this route, it's third party. One five uh, one fifteen BR era did not run its line, it was one five eight. What year was one five eight made? So these were introduced to uh, Rail in nineteen eighty nine. Built by uh, Brel in Derby. Okay. Uh oh, I'll do a bit of Google on that one, I must say. Let's lock doors and let's end the scenario. Right, so, little debrief, let's see how we did. Silver medal, I'll take that, we're slightly day on the, you can see how the label So 1 minute, 9 into the 3 into the carbis. Four into uh, it's nice. Actually, it wasn't too bad actually. Stop marking, can't really complain about that. 20 minute service driven, not bad, not bad at all. Right, so back to the menu. Let us uh, well, let's do the uh, Monday recreation. So, if I go to tools and scenario panel, what I've done is I've put together the service that I was on back in. Back on my trip down to Penzance a couple of weeks ago. So I was on 2 Charlie 2 7. The, uh, so it starts off in Cardiff, went down to. I think it was Cardiff, yeah, it was Cardiff to Penzance. I bought it at Plymouth, and on it, with this scenario, it starts off at the uh, eastern extreme of this map, which is going to be St. Austell, running all the way down into Penzance. On the way, you can see several sites. You've got 2 Alpha 33, 2 Papa 19, 2 Papa 20, 2 Echo 22, and 2 Alpha 31 on the way as well. So several units that went out of uh, Penzance and hopefully she gives a realistic recreation of the old 2 Charlie 2 7 so Monday timetable driving the class 43 castle sets so castle is a reduced form HST with only four passenger carriages not eight there it goes high speed train great and green that's our numbers uh, we'll set train up as well so master key comes on train into forward doors unlocked Yeah, that's our modern great as well. Modern great and green HST. And on the other track, you can see the part sink uh, sprinter in a livery that I put together for the uh, 150. So this is a livery editor. I'll show it off in the uh, entry as well, kind of what I did to this one. But it is, it, it's, it's a slap job, not perfect, but it, it does the job. It looks like a 115 great and green, so I can't complain. Right, so we'll let doors, we'll let passengers finish boarding some marking, and then we'll make our departure down to Penzance. Uh, in terms of stations we're stopping at, we'll be stopping at Truro, Redruth, Camborne, Hale, St. Earth and Penzance. One, two, three, four, five. We're stopping at every station on the way. Lock the doors and let's get ready to depart. Um, I don't believe it. Uh, I prefer Trinity World 2, are you mad? I like Trainsim 22. Trainsim World, I think, is the, uh, in my opinion, a slightly more realistic, better sim. 
in every regard about driving. Driving a bit 50 50, but hey ho. Um, don't know how I don't believe you, train driver. Sorry, West Coast man, I just don't believe you. I'd love to believe you, but I don't. Um, should have black window frames. Still looks great though. Ooh, I knew I missed something. The black window frames, that's what I was missing. I will, uh, well, I'll flog myself now for you. So I can, uh, be punished for my horrible livery at creation. Next station, Truro. So we're 2 Charlie 2-2. Two two. The 15-15 departure out of St. Austell. About 40 minutes away from uh, Penzance. Uh, can you crash in the sim? Yes, you can, Lemmers. It's not easy to do, but it's not impossible. It's one of the safe systems since this is a modern day route now. In terms of differences, so between uh, St. Austell and Truro, right? so between uh, Bangalow and Provis, in the sim, it's a single track line. As 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 of 2004, the line got doubled up again. So it used to be double line, then it got singled in the 1920s, and in 2004 they redoubled the line. So it's about uh, seven and a half miles long. The single line track line. We'll show it when we get there. Cost about 14 and a half million pounds to reinstate, which was provided by Network Rail and local communities. But um, essentially. That's, that's the major difference between 1980s and modern. That stretch track is single, not double. And again, only recently, 2004, it got redoubled, so it's not particularly an old bit of line as well. Because that, for many years, was a big bottleneck with this track. Because it's a singled line, you can only run one train down at a time. And for almost 10 miles, that's a long, long bit of track, which you can only run one train down. Especially quite a busy line as well, so certainly improved the service you can see trains heading up and down. Uh, just other 150s and mostly recent for quirks to identify them. Yellow window frames are in the Reaver trains thing. So, this isn't an, an official route on. Well, not an official scenario but on the trains in the world, but I need to on the headlights, don't I? Those in the HST are here. Daytime heads. Uh, so, train supply, that's fine. Wind the uh, spare, that's the wipers. Just remind myself of a quick setup this train. It's been a while since last probably drove it. Yeah, it's pretty standard stuff. Engine stop, engine start down below. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, how do I have master key and cab doors key and T key? Um, well, first of all, it's not called a T key like that. A cab door key is a T key. Or an L key or a J key, depending on what uh, you talk provide you. In my case, actually, I won't go and take it to what talk I am. Uh, depending on what talk you are, I get a different type of key. So, T key, yeah, if it's possible, but not spelled like that. Your cab door key is the T key. And the master key is generally provided at the depot. Not something well. You can't. That depends on the talk again. But hey ho. Uh, one five zero 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 ten monocle with GWR on the cab with no frames replaced. Ah, okay. Interesting. So this is a single bit of track. As you can see, it's certainly wide enough to fit two tracks, and at one point it used to be. 2004, they reinstated it uh, back to the double track. Yeah, there you go, you've learned spelling for Tiki now. So next station is Truro, get there in about 10 miles. By the way, um, that was actually the first time we really saw, well, we saw an Oslo passing through as a freight train in the tutorial, now passing through as a passenger train, running all stations into Penzance. So this is how I personally remember the route as a passenger, 
heading to Penzance, prep myself for the next day. We're going to ride a service in. Well, next day took a flight into uh, St Mary's, swam down the, the uh, island Sydney, and took the uh, the boats back to the mainland. So one thing that the Isle of City Sky Bus and Steamship Corporation on the island offer is a day trip package. So you fly out and take the boat back on the same day. So you need a one day trip. Costs about seventy pounds. Gives you a four day on the main island of Verse and Mary. Into U Town, walk around a bit, walk around the island. You can do a lot in a day in St Mary's. I'll do another day trip, probably explore a different island for today, but you can do quite a bit. It's worth uh, worth doing for sure. Has anyone here become tried to become an engineer or driver? I mean, I work in a ride myself, you mad. I don't work as a driver. Although I actually, I, I'm a volunteer train driver. I drive uh, narrow gauge diesel locomotives. Um, as the main career, maybe one day in the future. Not yet. But maybe one day. Oh yeah, the scenery is fantastic. I definitely agree with that one. The scenery really is top of the range of this one. Rivet and my grand's job recreating it. Let me uh, stick myself further down the line somewhere. Let's get a side by view of the train train driving by. Is that a bridge? Yeah, it's a bridge. Got enough bridges. Great views from uh, down the bottom of these. So once we get to Truro, potentially we'll see another service on our right hand side passing by. <clears throat> Haven't you finished stream? Very good. How's your landing, dude? How's your flight go? <clears throat> I'd love to see some add ons for the northern branches, so part of Newquay and uh, Esky to Lou. I've been to Newquay, I've not been on there by train. There's an article trip down in Cornwall a couple of years ago. But uh, I've been on the platform, looked around and seen the uh, sprints passing out of there. It's a lovely little town, Newquay. I'll uh, return for sure. Been to the... Uh, there's an Aldi near the station. Behind that's like a view of the old cliffs and all that. Very pretty. <clears throat> Too fair, dude. Most of your landings are minus 700 and horrible and bouncy. Most of your flights end up with, I must admit, such and such has happened. Not often it's a smooth, normal landing. Uh, you drive CSX only in train sim. Oh, only in train sim. Two. Just like West Coast Mainline drives in train sim. Claims to be a real driver. It's obviously not. I'm sorry, dude. The more you try to convince us, the less likely it really is. It used to be. A, mm. Certainly, the first half of that statement is true. That's a half, I doubt. Um, so carry on. Towards Truro, about halfway there now to our first stop. Look at the map, potentially there's a train at the station or should soon arrive. The answer should soon arrive. <coughs> Welcome, Johnny, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chat, how are you today? Uh, Park has been one of the few stations only three in its name. Yes, very true. Uh, there are only two stations on the undergrounds that have all the co all the vowels in their names. What are they? There are only two stations. Have a think, not Google. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a guess that all of you straight away turn to Google.
no idea. You barely know the 20, 21 stations. There's more than 21 on underground, Owen. If there's only 21, I'm looking at the right underground network. <laughs> you use Edge, not Google. Oof, Bing. That's the old browser on that. I use Firefox, Google my browser. Firefox, sorry, Google's my search engine. Firefox is the browser. I use Edge for streaming, only because it's really lightweight and easy to run in the background. When I'm not streaming, Firefox it always is. A little bit of thrusting, keep train running steady. <clears throat> Uh, best station code for uh, has to be Teesside Airport. It's a shame that Teesside Airport as a station is now parliamentary service. It's one train a week heading eastbound, so even away from uh, from York. Um, I've been to Teesside. I've flown there from London Heathrow. I flew with Logan Air in Embryo 145. Very fun flight. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's not a very well loved airport, although Logan Air have pledged to add more flights in the announcement there. And, uh. You never know, maybe one day get an improved train service, but that for the future. When I went to Teesside, I took the bus. The flight landed about half an hour early, which was great for me because I could take an earlier. Sorry, where's the gauge lights in here? There's a little twisty dive somewhere with gauge lights. Sparking brake, emergency brake. Where's the gauge lights? If only uh, Chris Grubb was there, he'd know. There's meant to be a dial somewhere, a little twisting dial. Gauge lights, I cannot find them to save my life. Uh, climate control, fan speed, brake test. Oh, I'm going to go crazy now. Headlights. Oh, there you go, so let's see, finally got it. Mansion House and South Ealing. <clears throat> Two stations in the underground that make use of all the, co the vowels in their names. Uh, I've already replaced 115 GWR Northern. I've, I've done GWR, I've not yet done Northern. That's uh, next on my list. Where's this gauge like? Come on, it's a little twisty dial, like a three spoked uh, dial. I know what it looks like, I can't find the bleeding thing anymore. That's annoying. <laughs> uh, professional train driving on this channel. So what are we gonna get? Uh, none of those. It's not these. That's the old recorders. Master key. I'm on Droya. On. I must be going insane. Wipers. Get the uh, driver's safety device. Nope, I cannot find it. My life is ruined. Sure, it's. it's pretty... It must be in front of me, just somewhere really obvious. Well, it has to be obvious. It's a gauge light switch. Uh, driver's buzzer. There we go. Gauge demo. There we go. Turn that off, off now. <clears throat> uh, the odd uh, high pitch buzzer as well. Right, well, I should better start sitting down for Truro now. We're only 0.8 miles from there. Gosh, bad check the uh, distance there. Uh, talking about repaints, you believe you have one of its. Uh, it's not a professional. <clears throat> you believe you have the one. 
one of, if not the only, professionally resprayed London Midlands Fast Oh, interesting. What, what, what was the livery originally on it? And what condition was the livery? If it was clean and new, I hate you. If it was old and grotty, then I can, uh, you can be forgiven. What was the original livery of the other 150 you got? Welcome also to Truro now approaching. Frame rate getting a solid 60 FPS in this right now. No problems with uh, major FPS loss. Stick ourselves at the end of the platform, shall we? While our train makes an approach. Oop, here comes an inbound uh, 150. Quite busy at Truro now. It's all picking up. Not a perfect repaint, but if something happened to go for about 30 minutes. Honestly, I can't complain. It looks the part, does its job. I can't complain. Central trains I was locked off the far from new. Hmm. I'll give you a hmm as a reaction for that. So now pressing Turo, after Turo it's Redruth, then Camborne, Hale, St. Earth and Penzance where the train terminates. Be mindful of time, I've got an early morning shift tomorrow morning. So this will be our last run for this uh, stream. Uh, your worst fear of 150s books on service that'd be a, a 3 plus 2. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I've, 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 been, I've been on a. I'm sure I've been on 150. I'll have to double check the. It, it's an odd. Uh, the only sprints I've been on is one on a uh, Scott Rail. And that was a journey from Glasgow, Queen Street, to Oban. That is the only time I recall going on a sprinter unit. I can't recall going on a Great Western one. Certainly can't recall going on any... Uh, anything in the Midlands. Any I can recall, Great Western... Uh, Scott Rail. Uh, welcome Kangaroo, what's how doing? Welcome channel, welcome chat. Uh, curbside, I do still work on the mini trains, yes. I do still volunteer at the, uh, the RL. I'm still a narrow gauge train driver. That's not going anywhere. Uh, you really like 3 plus 2 seating. That's the only place in hell. What's wrong with old uh, Tourist Open? That's the name of it. That's the name of it if you want to have a look at more detail, uh, Owen. 3 by 2 seating is known as Tourist Open. Children use it a lot. Um, Southeastern use it quite a lot. Trying to think that's all used three by two. Uh, Greater Anglia, they're older trains. Actually, even the um, the new ones, the um, the Flats, they use three by two. Comfy trains. My word, the, the the aisle, one of the narrowest I've been on in the train, I must say, for the modern era. I'm sure Thames Lake even used to drive by two.
Continue at the pace now. Keep train running steady at 60 miles per hour. And throttle 2 will post. Um, the guards are too narrow. The window seats are hard to get out of, and when the guard is coming through, they have to lean over you to inspect the uh, tickets. Mm. I, don't, I, say, I don't mind. Seating layouts, I've never again. One of the many things I've not really paid too much attention to in regards to what's good, what's not. No problem getting out of them. I mean, I'm not the uh, slimmest of people in the world, but I've never had a problem at a 3 by 2 seating. US. Sorry, DSD. No, they're best in this line because it predates uh, AWS. It's all DSD. All DSD. Well, I think it has AWS, it's just not. So, the 1980s is a weird time because AWS is being fitted in this era, but it's not a requirement. So drivers can have it switched off and drive normally. It wasn't until the late 1990s, early 2000s that AWS became a requirement and all trains had to have the system active. Um, so that's down to the Hanwell and Southall crashes. Sorry, Hanwell and Zadbrook Grove crashes on the uh, Great Western. Since then, AWS has been a requirement. Before then, it was being fitted, but drivers could leave it switched off and it wouldn't have affected them in any way. Times have slightly changed since the 90s. Most of the uh, recent issues on British Rail comes down to uh, landslides these days. So last year you had the crash at Stonehaven, that was due to a landslide onto a Scott Rail at Irvis. And then the other day you had the um, collision in the tunnel on Great Western and Southwest Trains network. That preliminary is down to low adhesion, so the Southwest Trains could not break in time to hit the Great Western. And that's combined with issue with the foreign in the tunnel which the Great Western train collided with and derailed. So adhesion and landslides certainly the big problem of the modern era of railways in the UK. Four miles from Redruth. Very shortly start the braking for approach. Uh, neither of neither the trains took an object. Ah, okay, I must have missed that report then. I know the initial reports came out as an object. Has that changed? I'll, uh, I'll do a bit more reading on that tomorrow, I think. I've, I've read the initial reports, I've not read the RIB reports, so I need to uh, get myself up to date with that one. Well, thanks for letting me know. Thanks for letting me know. <clears throat> Three miles from Redruth.
bit more speed going on there, so we have lost a little bit on the approach now. Uphill climb, 1.4% of the grade, nothing too steep. I must say, 1.7 compared to 1.4, like a roller coaster. And then about two miles, just under that, we'll start the break into a road to next station. Also, midpoint of this line. Uh, GBO 158 was protected by a red signal, but the 159 applied brakes spadded as the incident slide. Uh, South West Railroad 74 had faultless grip 50 years. Gosh! 74, that's. Well, it's post retirement age, so I can imagine that uh, potentially that's something coming up for him. Uh, that's a shame. <clears throat> I believe the other driver, the DWI driver, is 50 something. Again, it's a faultless career. So, uh, one five was protected by a red signal, 159 applied the brakes, spadded, and sent to the side. Because I know that the accident happened outside of a junction, so what was one train crossing the junction? No, because it was. I'd, say, I'd have to do a bit more reading, kind of the positioning and the timing for it all. God, 50 years spotless record for that to happen now. That's. Fortunately, there's no fatality to this one. That was my big fear when I looked at the old uh, reports as it initially came in. 30 something injuries reported, no fatalities. Fortunately, that was. Uh, the case, no fatalities. It's only a part-time driver, okay. Oh, inbound uh, castle sets. Heading northbound to Cardiff. A little bit breaking now as we start our slow down into the station. At this point, the rest of the line stations a little more frequent. One for the nine driver did everything by the book, nothing could do, went straight to the most rate very promptly and avoided such an instant, uh, apparently. <clears throat> welcome, Scuba, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome, Chats, how are you today? How are you? So we're now approaching Red Roof. Please remember your blogging to when this buck on the train. Uh, Red Roof, more like <laughs> Dead Wrath. <laughs> I've had a few comments about uh, Red Roof, I must say. Same for um, Camborne. Apparently, not the nicest area to live in. Um, by the way, your source of information was one who works at Exeter Depot, a good friend, and one Southwest Railway driver. Your source of information on the uh, RRB. Okay. <clears throat> So give you a few more seconds. Lock the doors. Brakes released. 
easy going. Next station, Cambon. I've got to say, compared to the acceleration of this, the IATs, these are ancients, old ancient technology. The IATs are far the uh, faster trains. <laughs> Christ, not Cam when I was really top three up. <laughs> I thought that was uh, Wolverhampton supporters in the eyes of uh, Aston Villa fans. <laughs> Oops, I thought my speed a bit there. Went too fast now. Spider brakes, slow down a tad bit. Next station, Camborne, in three miles. There you go, up to 50. Do the uh, horn <clears throat> to go over junctions and have the crossings. Oh, yes, I forget your rules, fan. <laughs> Don't worry, says my father, he's used to it. <clears throat> I'll leave throttle about two for the sake of coasting. As we start to come uphill again, just keep train running. Running on the Mozart, just to keep it from slowing down. Vantage point to train running by. Is that a bridge? An overpass? Yes, it is. Let's stick ourselves on it. There's a big one over there. That's more like it. Fans getting the typical music comments about the Waterloo service being cancelled from Exeter. Some people, yeah, I'm afraid that's uh, how it goes sometimes. <clears throat> I'm afraid that's how it goes. I can tell you, first hand experience from the other end of that as a, a workup. Right, so we're going to start the. Well, we'll give it a few. We're already at 44, so we won't break just yet. Initial braking now. Let's just start slow train down as we approach into uh, to Camborne. <clears throat> Time speed up to 17. That will be very handy when we start the uh, run into Hairdens and Earth in a minute. That looks like another train coming up towards us. Maybe not. Uh, no, we won't pass under the service for a little while. There's one currently stationary at uh, St. Earth. That would be at the service to St. Ives at. And that's about. Uh, what time would that be? It's about 10 past, I think. Because <clears throat> it's the time we arrive, it leaves about 5 minutes after we arrive at St. Earth. So, any passengers that need uh, to go to St. Ives or the stations on the line, they can do so coming off of this train. Because a lot of these local services out towards the more rural areas, yes, they follow a timetable, but they're public service routes, so they need to. Uh, match up times which will let every passenger get service they need to Inverness station up in uh, Scotland quite a good one for public service routes because yes again trains follow a timetable but if a train is delayed then they will hold a train for that passenger to connect onto it because 
because there's a fuel sign coming up from uh, Aviemore, and you get to Aberdeen by train. If you miss your connection at Inverness, your next train is about three hours, so they will halt the Aberdeen train, or the Stonehaven's final destination, in order to uh, allow passengers to make that transfer across. Ah, sorry to say that, Charlie. Uh, focus on your grandma. Don't even drop by. Sorry to hear that, dude. Hopefully, she makes a recovery. Welcome to Camborne. Another quick stop here. It's uh, what's going local. Uh, they have the train in Newquay and Parnie train with the was running late. It's really kind of Newquay, roughly every two hours. Same as the train inbound from um, Paddington to Plymouth. When we arrived about 20 minutes late, the train from Cardiff to Penzance was held by 20 minutes. That train could meet it and uh, we could change. I say a lot of these routes they do it for the sake of making connections. As always, just say thank you to the staff and off you go. Uh, she's in high spirits anyway, just sits in the boom broken. Be okay, so it's only a few days. Hopefully we'll be a full recovery. Well good luck dude. Hope things uh turn to normal. Uh Velox my life tomorrow. I hope to be live tomorrow. I'm gonna do some fishing tomorrow, fishing stream. It's been a long time since he's asked one of those, so uh, hopefully she'll be rather good at that. <clears throat> um, if you have wheel slippage, uh, Jason, if the adhesion's really low, train sort of 20 miles per hour, it's possible, because essentially it's like, well, if the, slip, if, the wheel li if the line's that bad and there's a lot of contamination, there's ice, whatever, your train wheels tend to ice skates. You apply the brakes, Yes, the wheel stopped moving, but metal on metal, there's low friction. Oops, I'm going to handle that. Uh, you've got to remember the train that... Yeah, metal on metal, it's low friction. Most train lines are flat because trains can't do hills. If it's too steep, they're physically not be able to do them, so... Then the train will start ice skates by adding too much contamination. The train will just slip and slide, regardless of the uh, brakes. <clears throat> Uh, fishing, so the, course, the game's called uh, Bass Master, so it's by Dovetail Games, it's one of their fishing uh, platforms. Uh, what time will I be live? Probably about 6.37pm, before goes to plan. I'll go into more detail on that on Discord, probably tomorrow. Uh, not sure, uh, Tezza, Terra, checking your flight plan. This is a train sim stream, not a flight sim stream. Uh, biggest fishing in the railway is also sometimes being sound for safety wise when it comes to your slip -in. Oh yes. So running on metal, Metal, in fact, let me show you outside. Uh, metal wheel, metal rail. Very efficient. Well, there's low energy to get your train moving, but as a result, there's low friction. And any contamination, it's like leaves on the line. Yes, on a car, leaves that cause no problem, but for a train driver, it's um, bad because it's. You cross the leaf, turn into a pulp. And it causes this really oily substance that just ruins it's, like, it's like rubbing uh, baby oil lotion or whatever new skin. It's really, really greasy, really, really uh, sticky, and the train just has nowhere to stop. Uh, no worries, Owen. You take care, dude. Have a good one. Bye bye. Uh, maybe you're wrong, but it looks to me that the train driver ignored the warning and brakes too late. Um, no, he, he brakes on time, uh, Jason. He even applied emergency brakes, but because there's no uh, adhesion, the brakes were useless in that scenario. The, dri the train driver, based on initial reports, did everything correctly. The driver made no error, he applied the brakes, applied the emergency brakes when he realised there was no stone down, and ultimately the train just slid it, skidded into the uh, side of the Great Western units. <clears throat> Uh, 
If they're too late to interest the world, you'll probably demonstrate. There is a way you can demonstrate it, just if you set the weather to a really, really horrible, icy and slow, Train to the world has got really good um, the, um really good wheel slip physics and uh adhesion simulation. So actually yes. If we were to do it, I think the worst training sim for it is the What would be the worst training for slip on this sim? I'd have to do a bit of I'd have to do like kind of a bit of a search to kind of feel all the trains for all the um wheel slipping, but some of the local hall ones can be a bit oversensitive with the uh, slippage. station is hail two miles after hail our penultimate stop will be St Earth final station will be Penzance speed reading image is down to 6 miles per hour so apply a little bit of braking so that's a for that Wide up, so this one's a bit more uh, wide out. And let's not slow him down now for uh, the hay up. After hail, the limit down, drops down to 45 miles per hour. Can be a relatively slow approach into uh, Penzance, but hopefully get some sort of speed limit increase between them. Uh, do you have any updates to train squads to steam trains? Um, no updates yet, Jason, on steam trains. I know that they're in the works, they've been developed, but as it stands, there's no release date, there's no, there's no major information on what we're expecting to see. They're coming, but that's all we know at this point in time. If you want updates in terms of when things are coming, the best place to look would be the roadmap, because that's updated two times a month with when things are coming out and all that, so your best place to look would be the roadmap. I'm afraid that's all I can really say. I know as much as you do in regards to what's coming and when it's uh, coming out. Find some braking now. Train slowly to a halt. I'll have to check the real life uh, to try 27. Scheduling for timing. Uh, I'll do that in a second. Whoops. Whoop, whoop, too slow that. Do you see the platform? Uh, when we're stationary, I'll have a look at the timetable for the service and see how close we are to the real life uh, time. I think we're a few minutes behind schedule. Not terribly behind, but certainly not on time at the moment. Uh, Favourite on the game, Jason? Probably Southeastern High Speed or Great Western Express. My two favourites Great Western or Southeastern. Right, let's have a look. 2 Charlie, 2 7 GWR. What time should we be here? So, starts at Plymouth. Sorry, not it's not a Cornwall service. It's Plymouth. Uh, sorry, not a Cardiff service. It's Plymouth service. Some starts to Plymouth South stuff at Cornwall. Uh, hey, so we, we arrive at fifteen fifty six. We passed fifteen fifty eight. We're about three minutes behind schedule at the moment. Not terrible time. Not terrible time. Uh, so after we arrive at sixteen hundred, it's only about four minutes. Sorry, only two minutes away. Uh, we arrive at St Earth. Part sixteen oh one. 
past Long Rock at 16.07, arrived at Penzance at 10 past 6. We're only 9 minutes away or so from the end of the line. At between two stations now, it's about 2 minutes. There we go, 1.5 miles, 2 minutes. I was going to have a guess that this uh, footpath here is traced by footbridge. Uh, strange thing in modern HT cab, you say you've seen the uh, default Kuju Trensum one. Yeah, the old Kuju one, that's uh, a throwback to the old Trensum stuff. So I do like uh, Chase Mod 2, the 43, not a bad simulation for what it is, not a bad simulation at all, not perfect, it's one of the first look the sim actually had when it released, but the representation was very good for its time. Oop, here comes the inbound uh, GWR sets, someone left uh, Penzance only a couple of minutes ago. Finish accelerating almost immediately. Start applying the brakes for our next station. The train that's currently stationary. Nope, that has departed. We have missed it by a couple of minutes. Sorry, passengers, if you're wishing to travel to uh, Leyland, Carbis Bay, or St. Tives, you've uh, missed the service and will now have to wait another hour <laughs> for the next one. We do apologise for the uh, delay on the service. Uh, do I touch you for trains? I do. Um, just my next stream in train. Well, I need to do 3 on 3 at some point in Train Sim Worlds. I also need to do the um, Birmingham Cross Country Line on Train Simulator. I will do Train Simulator at some point, just. I'm not giving up on it entirely, but I will be doing it soon. That's what I can say. I will be doing it soon. I need to do the Birmingham route on that at some point. Um, you really need to do the route. I don't know how I'm going to get through it because apparently Epic Games is the ones that preventing a route editor. What, on default train sim? Or train sim world? What's your source on that, Joss? What's your source of information for the uh, route that's being blocked by Epic Games? Not something I've passed in your red. I've been trying to see what you, uh, what you know on that. Uh, opinion on HS2. You think it's much needed yourself? Seems to get better left behind the train world in the UK. So, my pick, let's say, I've got no real opinion on HS2 because I can, I can agree the benefits in that. Yes, it's a fast train service takes um, trains off the West Coast Main Line to run more services and also gives Britain more of a modern train line, but I just want to see the negatives. Destroys a lot of nature, it's a 20 minute benefit to Birmingham, okay some of the Section 2 destinations will granted have better service, but a lot of the uh, short distance runs, not much, not much of a benefit. So I can see things from both points of view. Ultimately, time will tell in regards to uh, whether or not really worth it or not. There we go, 2 out of 25 posters. Really looking good. Here it's uh, some turf. Our penultimate stop. Very shortly, make my way over to Penzance. I wonder if the carriage are. S Let me have a look. So the seats are sitting out when I did this run a couple of. Okay, so it was this seat here, so I sat on this seat, table, good leg room in the accessible bit, although this was the last carriage of formation, so I was sitting over in carriage 4, number 1 uh, London End. Uh, brakes released, the black power, um, yeah, but that carriage along the leg room, that was when I was sitting at. Uh, not 100% official or known to be true, it was just said in an stream by someone who said that there is a reason. Oh, interesting. Uh, I don't know, from scratch, which takes too much resources. Okay, uh, that's an interesting uh, spot there, just actually, I must admit. Makes sense. Interesting, uh, interesting balance. We should see if Epic Games are the reason. If, if it's Epic Games blocking it, then 
that will explain a fair bit. Uh, first Cornwall route was meant to head to Truro Road. Right? Uh, why did it extend it to Austin? Austin and Austin. So they extended it because people requested it um, at Melbourne. So yes, it was meant to go as far as Truro Road, right? but they added the extra station at St. Austin because why not? They had a reasonable set of time for it. It's about 10 miles long, so adds a bit of length to it, and well, single line track, it's not really too difficult to build. So initially, you're right, it was meant to go as far as Truro Road, right? but they extended it one stop to uh, St. Austin instead. Next station, our final stop, Penzance. We're about 10 minutes, well, we're about 6 minutes behind schedule. Still try and make it as close to one time as possible for the uh, final stop. Cut the throttle now. Passengers, we've got a few on board. It's not super full, but. About right for the service to say, middle of the day, middle of the week. About right passengers numbers. So this will be our last run. We're gonna have a quick look at the uh, delivery editor at the three at the um, the one fifty that's on the GWR green, and then. Bring to an end, so we're gonna we'll do another like five minutes extra at the end, so just look at the uh, 150 in detail. So far, this is a good old route, the scenery is fantastic. The 150 to 7, not bad trains overall. You get some enjoyment out of this route, so you'll definitely get some enjoyment out of it, that's uh, a guarantee. So, yeah, fair play River Games, you have produced us uh, a decent old route. I'll grab my uh, hat for tomorrow. It's quite cold these days in uh, London. I'm nice and warm for the uh, work there ahead. Way too fast there. <laughs> uh, this is a single mile, well, single track uh, section when you approach into Penzance. Step on the right hand side. Sorry, just paying attention to the speed limits there. Uh, the Penzance station itself actually is at the other end of the, uh, the bay, just over there. That is the castle I can't remember the name of that overlooks the harbour. And very shortly, line go back to uh, double track again. Could increase up to 70 as you approach speed to the station. Down to 15 as we enter the uh, platform section. Oh, yeah, the coastal bit's fantastic. We walk to, if we set ourselves up on the uh, the walkway, a nice open bit, there we go. Route is fantastic. A few uh, platform bays on the right hand sides, all used for freight and depot work, not a station uh, for passengers. Essentially, once upon a time it was a station for passengers, but not anymore, that's for sure. So, Michael's Mount, there you go, thank you, Jason, for the uh, local knowledge. So Michael's Mount. 
Uh, I've seen it in real life, I just never Google it for anything. Right down to 50 miles per hour. Let's approach Penzance. Form 3 will be entering. Was I standing when I took a video? So I took a video of trains at, uh, it was about here I was standing, was it? In the platform. It was an inbound uh, cross country service, I believe. Sorry, inbound IET with a parting outbound uh, HST set. Get a little more speed going since we really spoke a little too late there. Not too much, just keep it steady at around 10 to 15 miles per hour. See, another difference between 1980s Penzance and modern day Penzance. The three tracks here, three here, in front of us, have since been poured. Also, these fences have been poured, and actually you can step onto that with red ease. You shouldn't, because it's still a trespassing network where I can stab people with a 1,000 pound fine plus jail sentence. But, the fence has been removed and you can easily spot and access this bit of the uh, station here. Uh, you think you're off uh, the cross country HST over a 5 hour genuine IT. Luma got better seats on the IT, however. Will there not be standard seats on the IT? I'm not sure. I've not been I've not been on Luma. I've seen I've seen their trains in, in real life. I saw them in um when I went to Edinburgh a couple of weeks ago, I saw them doing a few testing runs out of uh, Waverley. I didn't think the seats would be any different. I haven't watched the uh, Jeff Marsh video on it. At some point I need to. Nice and steady. Uh, like I said, it depends on my uh, Michael set. Right in here, platform four, is it? Uh, yeah, platform four. Outside here, a nice little burger stand. Comes up a burger and. Uh, well, that's it, really. Just a burger. Nice peppercorn beef uh, patty. And a part of that platform one on the sleep service. So now he returns back to London. Platform one was our departure. About four minutes behind schedule. Not too late. Best than I thought it would be in the end, actually. Best than I thought it would be. Uh, they replaced the off seats with decent seats on Lumo. It's crazy how a new train can get ruined by uh, not using decent seats. True. Train seating has been a bit of a commotion over the last couple of years. Gently does it. Fire the brakes. Welcome to Penzance. Um, I'm going to shut train off now. So brakes. Yeah, I'll deal with it. So brakes. Uh, full size brakes. Fire throttle. Train reverse uh, off. Turn off the master key. Turn off the headlights. They're going to tail lights now. And also turn down the. Uh, Gauge lights, there we go. And that right there is a shutdown cab. Could shut down the engine as well. Don't think we will. And once again, Penance Station, very much like this in real life. A few ice creams, thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah, ooh, Pester as well. Welcome to Penzance. Like I say, very similar to in real life, although since the 1980s, obviously this, these have expanded and the bar and buffet has now become a first class lounge, also a sleeper lounge as well, with a few extensions that goes into the far wall for toilets, showers, that kind of stuff. Let's lock our doors. And let's bring things to an end. So, it took us an hour and one minute, 39 miles driven, 227 yards walked. 
Not bad stopping. 20 yards off the Campbell, apparently. But apart from that, the rest of it all looks pretty good. Uh, level 90 on the profile. Level 6 on West Cornwall. Local level 5 on the HST. And that is the end of the driving. Uh, we'll have a look at the Class 150 NGD bar green on the livery designer. Before I finish. So if anyone wants to try and copy this for their own uh, use. Pretty simple. You just create the... So here you go. Here's the front car. The uh, driver motor. You can see you've got the slash there for the... Uh, GW logo. GW logo is just standard lettering with a few triangles and the W to make it all kind of GWR-y. Door's a bit of a challenge, so it's not perfect around the corners, but it's as close as I could get it. Not perfect, so it's only it's about 30 minutes to make this, so it's a bit rough around the edges. The most rough bit would be kind of where the carriage is at the back, the roof kind of gets a bit mucky here, but spend more time on it, get that more sorted. But overall, not a, a bad creation for 30 minutes. On the front, you got the uh, you know, GW logo in black, the uh, bicycle stamp on the front, that was very handy. Um, other side again, so GW logo, all pretty standard. Got the grey stripe, green on the doors, same for the front, where it's single door. It's a bit rough around the top there, but hey ho. Yellow bar on the top there, also the little curved grey bit on the roof. Uh, yes, just orange, I did make this. I did make this before I started streaming. Same for the rear cab, it's pretty much the same. You can copy and paste all the parts actually. The only difference being the uh, toilet on one side. There you go. So there's, uh, there's no window. It's a reduced window, but kind of greyed off compared to the one on the right hand side there. Pretty standard stuff. Took a few minutes to design and then just copy paste the back to the front. So that's the class 150 in the livery designer. If we should make a modern Great Western Railways uh, livery. At some point, I'm going to make a northern one at some point as well, so I can get more of a more modern, great uh, North Transpennine service as well. Tend to do a modern day stream of that. Uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Uh, we've changed the background. Whoops. Okay, it's gone now. Um, yes, so that is West Cornwall Local. That's class uh, 150, class uh, 37, and a bonus, class uh, 43. Oh, uh, Gross Express. There you go. No, this isn't natural habitat, Paddington Station. At least it was natural habitat since uh, relocated. No longer run up to Paddington. It's all since uh, stopped. So, hope you, guys enjoyed, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. If you did, do leave a like. Do subscribe if you're not already. Thank you. What's the livery like as well? It looks really uniform. There you go. Fancy grey uh, green suit. Much nicer than the other grey track suits. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Do subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting. I'll see you again soon for some more train sim action. Take care guys, have a good one, and have a good night. Bye bye.